<laughs> all right. I'm going to go ahead and call the Town of Thompson Station Board of Mayor and Alderman meeting for the month of March uh, 2020 to order. Our first uh, matter of business is the Pledge of Allegiance of All Would Rise. <laughs> to the flag of the United States, States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, board, we have a consent agenda in front of us. Uh, it contains our minutes from the last meeting, as well as some uh, utility board reappointments and some new, new applicants to serve uh, and some open seats. Um, I had some changes to request of the minutes, so I want to pull that off the consent agenda, please. Okay, so take minute meetings, meeting minutes off. Okay, so down to part B. Now, to clarify, we have how many open seats? We have. The reappointment is uh, based on the bylaws that y'all adopted, yep. and then the second part of that um, is due to uh, Mr. Peterson's resignation, and um, Joe is not going to be able to continue to serve after this month. So there will be two of these. Okay. The bottom line is if all three of these gentlemen want to serve, yes, there's a spot for them. I'll make a motion to approve the remainder of the consent agenda, which is the consideration of the utility board appointments. I have a motion. Second. Motion second. Good discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good move. All right. Welcome, uh, Mr. Roberts. I see you in the uh, crowd. I don't see Bruce, but we're grateful for all three of y'all continuing to help out. So. All right, public comments. We're going to go ahead and open public comments. Anyone wishing to speak, can I, please. Can I uh, do the Oh, I'm sorry. Go first. back to the meeting minutes. Okay. A um, couple of changes under the audit pre presentation part. Um, the line that said, Arm and Dilks vehemently disagreed that the audit, with the audit note, and they felt the wastewater, wastewater plant should be declared impaired. Um, splitting hairs a little bit, but impairment's not a declaration. You can just take the declared language out, um, it's just impaired. Um, and then the second thing, at the, after they told Alderman Dilk, so they performed the audit and they stand behind their findings, I want it uh, recorded that I then made the comment that they should be fired effective immediately. Sorry, can you repeat your lesson? I, I made the comment that they should be fired effective immediately. So you're asking? That comment be served. Yes, I want that documented on the record. I entertain a motion. Motion to approve the minutes as amended. Second. Motion to second. second. Real quick, removing the word just declared doesn't make sense for that sentence ending in impaired. There needs to be a verb before that. No, impaired, it's an accounting term, that, and that's my point. It should be impaired as an accounting? That's a, yeah, it's impairment is, a, is an accounting terminology. That's why their explanation was bogus, because it's not an engineering term. It's not an engineering thing. It's an accounting judgment. Okay, okay, that's fine. That's fine. All right. Questions? Comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. All right. We can move to public comments. No one wishing to speak, please come forward. No one wishing to speak, we'll close public comments. We've got an unfinished business of which there apparently is none, correct? Not at this juncture. On to new business, item number one, approval of resolution 2020-006, a resolution of the town of Thompson Station, Tennessee, for the design and development of phase three of the town's greenway, and to authorize the mayor to sign a contract with Kimley Horn for the consulting services. 
contract to be provided upon receipt from consultant and attorneys. Yes, Mr. Mayor, it uh, is before you at each of your places. We do apologize. We did receive it about 4.40 this afternoon. Um, I think largely, and Alicia is here from Kim when she'll come up and speak. I think largely the delay is in terms of trying to get the information from the subcontractors to roll into the document. But you do have several things before you. You have the um, staff report from Mike, very similar as it was uh, from Wendy on the second phase. The second phase, again, was a recommendation for Washington for They recall the grant consultation services to again be awarded to Kimberly Boyd. This is the third, and was also, like the second, considered uh, and evaluated by our park board. So this is their recommendation. TDOT, um, excuse me, I guess, the sub-component within TDOT in the meeting, as I understand it, it was to be the kickoff for phase two, ultimately came back around as a, a, a phase three discussion with the recommendation that, to the extent possible, phase two and three be merged so that it would allow for one entity to do both, if possible. So there were uh, some advantages from the state's standpoint, permitting, and so on and so forth. If I oversimplify that, please correct me. No, it, it, you're right. I'm happy to answer any questions, but um, like Ken alluded to, we were selected for phase two and appreciate that opportunity. And uh, TDOT scheduled that kickoff meeting and we attended. Um, and about three-fourths of the way through their agenda, um, we got to the line item where it said budget, and I realized, because we had written the green application for phase two, that the budget wasn't quite right, and so I raised the question, and um, they seemed to scratch their head and, and weren't quite um, aware, and so they had stepped out and came back and said, well, we apologize, we've actually just had the kickoff for phase three um, um, in, incorrectly, so we were under contract with for phase two, not yet under phase three, but then we did have that kickoff meeting with TDOT for phase three, so their wires were crossed um, for that. So we've, we've had a kickoff meeting nonetheless for that phase, so. Quickly as the Parks Board rep, this, you know, there was a, a panel that, uh, a section committee that I was not a uh, part of, but uh, there was a three person selection committee that made the recommendation to go with Kim Horn and the board uh, approved the nomination or the, the recommendation to this board. So. I'll make a motion, Mr. Mayor. All right, go ahead. Make a motion to approve resolution 2020-006, resolution of the town of Thompson Station, Tennessee for the design and development of phase three of the town's greenway and to authorize mayor to sign, to sign a contract with Kimley Horn for consulting services a motion. I'll second. Motion second. Further discussion? Mr. Mayor, if I may, and Mr. Bell, if you wouldn't mind amending the motion to make it subject to approval by town attorney and town staff, because we got the contract this afternoon. I looked through it before the meeting. I need to finish that review and talk to Micah about it. That's the only change we would ask otherwise. Yes, I will supplement my motion to say upon approval of the town attorneys. So motion amended. Second. Motion second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so moved. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to getting that project done. Absolutely. Hmm. All right, uh, approval of Ordinance 2020-004, resolution of the Town of Thompson Station, Tennessee, for budget amendments for the current fiscal year 2019-2020 budget. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Steve, if you would, if you would move through. But is anticipated with the balance of this year. The, the overall balance on the uh, revised budgets, not the, the total expenditures, did not change for general fund or wastewater fund. Um, the only tweaks were were uh, in those expenses on some of them, but we were able to, to move uh, some of the monies around. I don't, I don't know if you have questions on that. 
So overall, everything is, is uh, going as planned. Um, General fund. I, I uh, adjusted the total sales tax dollars on uh, sales just of budgeting last year. Eighty-five thousand, reduce net. And projected salaries. That's uh, pulling that down to actual or to closer to actual because uh, part of the year we were short planner for about seven months and. Also, there's an allocation to the uh, wastewater side for some administrative staff that we did for that. The, the legal fees we adjusted uh, for the end of the year, uh, as well as consulting. So in lieu of staff, the other consulting fees uh, increased due to that. Uh, pulling down some of the street repairs and expenses to what is expected for the remaining of the year. That's where some savings happen as well. But overall, total uh, expenditures for budget for 2072 revises 2072. So we didn't change the bottom the total expenditures. And then uh, just for general uh, capital outlays, uh, we just pulled back of what's going to happen for the remaining year. And budgeting, just budget for each year right now for the revised budget. It's not that we have to spend it, but it's just a reality of what we can, what we probably will spend for June 30th. Wastewater side, similar situation. Really, just repairs and expenses were pulled pulled down. And uh, prior years, we didn't break out legal fees. Uh, this year, if I've asked new attorneys from fiscal year that we start breaking out wastewater legal fees from general fund fees, so that we have a better idea of what the wastewater <coughs> costs were. Overall, actually uh, pulled. The Increased uh, wastewater treatment fees on the top end. Full expenditures only increased by 18,000, which that was just the other consulting engineers and using uh, for the full year. for more of the full year. In 20, fiscal year 2019, we still had uh, on staff, with we were on staff for half the year, so we didn't have so much costs. So overall, that's not uh, all expenditures are still in line. Questions? Hey, how's the accounting work for, just, I was looking at the road improvement line item. Um, I guess we're gonna receive cash from one of the parties. How does the, how's that accounting work? Does it come on the receive, front end or the back end or? Receive what cash for? For the agreement. Kreitz Lane. Yeah, Kreitz Lane. Sorry. Oh, Kreitz Lane. Uh, so that went into uh, was that 100 and, Yeah, so that, that went into building permits. So it's located there now. The general fund it went up there. I'll have to look that up. I don't know what you're talking about, though. It's off the top of my head. Okay. All right. 
Thank you, Steve. So basically, if I'm interpreting proposals for a revised budget, it's we're more or less tracking with where we estimated we'd go this year. There's been some category changes. We're a little over in professional services fees and legal fees, and but under in payroll expense and some other areas that largely offset each other. We're a little bit down in impact fees. And I think as Sean alluded to, when the budget was put together, the Craigslist participation agreement was still a work in progress. But they have made that one again for the general fund. And are working now through another agreement to be made. It hasn't been. I have a question. Make one. I'll make a motion to approve ordinance number. 2020-004, an ordinance of the town of Thompson Station, Tennessee, to amend ordinance uh, number 2019-007, which is an ordinance of the town of Thompson Station, Tennessee, adopting the annual budget and tax rate for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2019, and ending June 30, 2020. I have a motion. Second. Motion second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So moved. Um, new business item number three, first reading on ordinance 2020-005, ordinance of the town of Thompson Station, Tennessee, to amend ordinance number 10-007, pursuant to Title 18, Chapter 1, regarding wastewater fund fees. No, that's Mr. McElroy is correct. Um, we included in the packet the original ordinance, uh, ordinance number 14-001, amended the original affluent disposal fee, increased it to $2,500. So you choose to amend that, that would be deleting, appealing that, that ordinance. And again, we did include the proposed revised ordinance 10 007 um, based on the recommendations from Jackson Fortin uh, proposal for different gallons per day. I think part of their proposal was 350, certain category was uh, 225, and other category was 250. Uh, additionally, uh, just so you all are aware, the ordinance would not be taking effect until July of 2020. Um, again, as you see, I tried to hopefully provide that to you where it was legible and you could read there are different alternates, alternatives. Uh, first being what had originally been presented was 9,225 uh, due at, upon preliminary plat. Another alternative was wastewater impact fee of 12,887. EDU at 225, due up on preliminary plat. And then the next alternative was wastewater impact fee of 14,319, uh, uh, EDU at 250, uh, due up on preliminary plat. Uh, then the next one was uh, alternative was wastewater impact fee of $20,047 for EDU at 350, due up on preliminary plat. And then there were two other alternate alternatives. Wastewater impact fee at 9225 for EDU. The first uh, wastewater impact fee being due upon preliminary, <coughs> preliminary plat. And then the uh, keeping the effluent disposal fee, that would be at $2,500 for EDU due upon uh, 
the building permit we obtained. That would place a grand total between those two, 11,725. And the last alternative is wastewater impact fee at 9,225 per EDU with uh, DUF on preliminary plat uh, with the affluent disposal fee at $4,500 per EDU. And that should be, that should read the last one, uh, due up on building permit. That would be a grand total of $13,725. Uh, there would also be, uh, pursuant to other ordinances that we recently passed, um, there would be a review of the wastewater impact fees in January of each odd, odd year starting in 2023. That is what we have assembled put together for your consideration. And it takes a review process to increase the rates. It doesn't happen automatically, correct? That's correct. And one thing in this I don't see is a recommendation. No, because as stated, that is a, uh, a policy matter. Your consultant came, gave his recommendation, we worked because he saw us in war with the region, and that priority was uh, anticipated to be a recommendation, but of course, based on all your discussion. Members for your policy decision. Well, I'll say this this document moves us in the right direction. I don't think we're quite there yet. Um, uh, first, I feel strongly that we need to separate the wastewater impact fee from the effluent disposal fee. Uh, simply because we have about 3,500 taps that have already been paid for, paid the wastewater impact fee, but they have not paid the effluent disposal fee. So we need a mechanism to collect that effluent disposal fee on those 1,500 taps. We can't just, just waive that fee. Um, so I, I think the, the effluent disposal fee just, just needs to stay. Um, not necessarily stay it is. I'm not even getting into the calculation of that yet. Um, Saying exist. It, it needs to exist as, as a mechanism to collect that fee from the development that has already prepaid for the tax fee. Wait, 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 just, just so you all are clear, within this document, calling these fees wastewater fund fees, then we're breaking it down to wastewater impact fee, and fluent disposal fee, right. overall wastewater fund fees. Okay, so in, in, in those terms, we have 3,500 prepaid wastewater impact fees, give or take, but only about 2,000 already paid effluent disposal fees. We have another 1,500, 1500 effluent disposal fee units coming our way, and we need a mechanism to collect that money. Does that make sense? <coughs> And then, um, then we can get into calculating how much that, that fee should be using the Hill property, the, the Alexander property, and determining what a fee per unit or a cost per unit is for, for drip field disposal. Uh, I don't think we can get to that number until we know how many acres we have on the Alexander property at a start. Uh, and then we can determine what the infrastructure is going to cost and then cost per acre because we, we, we own the land, um, but the fewer drippable acres on that land, the higher the cost per unit is for disposal. Does that make sense? And then uh, the wastewater impact fee, I think we're, again, we're moving in the right direction. Um, I think it needs to either be based on the 350 that we're we're approved right now for TDEC or the 250 that we're asking TDEC to go down to. Uh, the 225 just doesn't make sense. We're not using that for any planning or anything. Um, but if, 
the 350 is in place when we, when this ordinance becomes effective, we need to collect the fee based on 350. If the 250 is in place, we need to collect the fee based on the 250. If we don't know what's going to be in place, we need to put both in here and, and, and make sure we're covered or wait to pass it until closer to, to when we know. Uh, the only thing I guess I can add is with regard to the 350 and the 250, we, um, we've made the ask, but I don't know when we're going to get an answer from the state. And with regard to um, the Alexander property, we, we've done the actual survey related work there in the analysis phase, but I think as was mentioned earlier, um, that's going to be something for the state to come back and, and ratify or change or otherwise talk about. I don't know that that's going to be a very near-term discussion. I only say that because unless something's changed, they only, they, the state only currently in this area has one person doing that work. And that person's spread rather thin. You know. So I only say those two things because you know, time and those discussions have been, you know, front and center. And I don't know, and I don't think these gentlemen that have been in touch with the state know either what that's going to look like. So I just wanted to say that so that it's in the midst or whatever going forward happens timely or doesn't. I mean, it's just the obvious part. Yeah, and that, that's fine too. It's not preferable, but we can calculate it a effluent disposal fee based on just the hill property, just the, just the drip we had in place um, until we have the answers on the Alexander property. The point is, get the cost covered and get those costs covered as those taps come online and we, and we utilize that, that disposal. Um, so then getting back to the wastewater impact fee, um, I don't know how you calculate that right now. Um, we don't know what alternative we're going to go with. Um, we don't. We don't know all the costs involved. Sure. I'm really not asking for it tonight. I just want to make sure you know the statements I'm making for record because these are really big decisions are there. If you do approve tonight, item four, that is tantamount to having made a decision as to which direction you're going. Should we have four before we had three? In that case? The discussion in terms of what's going to pay in the near term debt service is going to be as was presented by MTAS and the utility board. That's pending because clearly those numbers were um, an improvement over the original study they did in 18. But for a lot of reasons discussed, it's not a definitive set of percentages and recommendations for an increase in terms of the fees. But at the end of the day, that's what the state looks at the cash flow to pay the principal and interest back. They, I'm not saying they don't have a concern about impact fees. They do, but that's not what they're looking at in terms of underwriting the principal and interest. Um, Steve and I both have had, had independent discussions with the controller's office on a couple of di different occasions, and even with the USDA, USDA folks in the meeting, they too look at the cash flow scenario as to your ability to meet the principal and interest payments. So that's a long answer. I mean, I hope that helps. Yeah, that's that's absolutely true, and that's why I'm advocating the lowest out-of-pocket expense for the for the ratepayers because they they have to cover the, the debt. That's why it's important when we borrow the money, not just how much money we borrow, because the ratepayers have to cover that that principal and interest. Don't know. Uh, I'm sitting on the utility board. I might have grossly oversimplified it, but I hope I've answered the question. No, you 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 answered it. Fine, and uh, and another issue I have with the with the rate study, any rate study that Ben does us is going to be wrong because our financials are wrong. Um, I can tell you that wastewater financials are misstated. Do 
Do we, um, obviously we know we've got to increase these fees and this does that, we've recognized that. I think if there's one thing I heard tonight, it was saying that this is heading in the right direction. I know there's, maybe there's some mis or uh, disagreements or there's maybe some missing information that some of us feel is needed to be delivered. Um, I'm of the opinion we move forward with this because, I mean, even if, I know there's another item on the agenda that is, is a critical part of this, but I do know from the information I've heard during this uh, workshop that, that, that we are needing more monies, which we want to try to capitalize on the amount of money that's coming from the uh, development and the building community and not so much for the so there, you know, I think there are some, let's see, let me remind myself this. We tabled this, correct, from last yeah. month? Oh, did we do it? Okay. Yeah. I would say the thing is, though, we don't have any more new fees coming on unless we accept prepayment. We, should, we shouldn't accept any more prepayment until we get these fees finalized and, and calculated and, and a plan in place. I'm, I'm with you. We need, to, we need to increase the fee. It's evident we need to increase the fee, and we need to collect the appropriate impact fee. Um, but as I said, we all, we've already collected it on 3,500 taps. We don't have capacity for more. I think my fear with what we what we're talking about, I look at the ninety two twenty five plus the forty five hundred affluent disposal. That puts us at a very fairly healthy amount in Williamson County of what we're doing. We don't want to price ourselves out of the market. We want to be fair, and, but we have to sit here and look be, look at what we're doing and make sure we're getting the right amount of money for what we're doing to pay for our wastewater system. But my fear is if we raise it too high, we would turn away some potential revenue for the town that could help us grow. And that is my biggest concern. I don't care. The growth has to pay for itself. Well, you, I don't disagree with you on that. Well, you just disagreed with me. You said we, we don't want to charge too much. Well, I'm not saying we don't want to charge. We don't want to price ourselves out of the market. We don't I, don't, I don't care what the market is. I want, I want to get the cost covered. Okay. I, I would. I will make a motion, Mr. Mayor. I will entertain a motion. I will make a motion to approve first reading of Ordinance 2020-005, Ordinance of the Town of Thompson, Texas, Tennessee, to amend Ordinance 10-007, pursuant to Title 18, Chapter 1, regarding wastewater acclimation and reuse. Second. Motion, second. What, what are you got? What are you guys basing these fees on? What numbers? I think, you know, there's an opportunity, this is first reading. I think I would like for you to put your questions in a written format. I mean, I think I, I have to submit my questions in writing to you now? Be because I get them at the meeting, Ben, and I can't respond to stuff. It's illegal for us to discuss it outside of the meeting. It can go, it can go to the town administrator. Right. Okay. I'm assuming you're talking about like the information that was provided by Mr. Dilks earlier in the. Like the spreadsheet. Yes. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, that one I, I put together today. You guys wanted to, to be with me today? <laughs> no. No, I mean, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Is that, is that the information to which you were. No, I'm speaking that's of like questions that he has about this ordinance. I mean, just general. I mean, there's there's some complicated questions that. There are some questions that we'll always disagree with. I mean, I think it's the devaluation of the plant, which you said the financials are totally wrong, which yeah. I don't know if we'll ever resolve that. I mean, oh, wait, wait, the, 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 real quick, I'm still speaking. Oh, Thank you. Um, I think we realize that we have to raise these impact fees. We are continually kicking the can by delaying this. We can always adjust it later. This is first reading, this is second reading. I make a motion to pass first reading. So if we get those questions, then what we would do is do our level best with advisors and those resources to endeavor to answer them, um, and then just send the information back out. Again, it would be no discourse, and uh, 
you know, in, in all candor, I'm sure some of those the accounting related questions and so forth probably would, would still persist in that. If I could make a recommendation, you know, something to Alderman Bell's point, Alderman Dills, this could be something we could have a workshop about. When we okay. want to discuss this and sit down, it might be worth our time to sit down for two hours, if it takes, just discussing this before the next BOMA meeting to have this so we can get everything out and have discussions about it. I think uh, that would be great and help facilitate your suggestion about the Google calendar for IP staff sent it out. The participation asking for dates between now and the end of the fiscal year has not been overwhelming. So that would be helpful. And then we could, uh, if you would like them to try to set something before the April bone meeting, that would serve to facilitate that, if that's the board's purpose. And it seems like it may be. But I would be okay with that. I mean, I, I think it should be on the day that happens, like before this meeting, just so we have time to absolutely yeah. absorb the things we talk about. Like it should be probably be a Thursday, maybe the Thursday before the board meeting on Tuesday. And most of our other town meetings are on Tuesdays. I, don't, I can't remember what utility board is, but parts of Tuesdays. We're on Wednesdays. Okay, so Thursday, the first Thursday of the month. Well, if that works before the, actually, we may not. But the Thursday before the board meeting is what I'm saying. We try to do it then. Where hopefully the agenda should be out theoretically, and a work session be that evening at. Uh, selfishly, I would think Sean and I both drive from downtown, so 6:30 the earliest. My, my request. But. I mean, this, Mr. This, Mayor, this issue is already out, so I think we can talk about this at any time. Really, I mean, it's not a new agenda item or anything. And yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll discuss it at any time. Um, my issue is, is, is going to remain that until we have cost certainty, we cannot calculate an impact fee. And that's my point to you. You're, you're, you're passing an ordinance to, to raise a fee, but you don't have any basis on which the fee is calculated. And that's, that's not, I'm right. not saying you don't have it, we don't have a basis. I think we need to understand exactly what we don't have and how we go about approving or moving forward with a increase with, if there's a missing, um, yeah, there's several, uh, you know, uh, integers that we're trying to solve for. Then I don't know. We just got to talk about that. I mean, we can't. There's we're not may not have 100 percent information. I mean, just and there's gonna be disagreements amongst us. So I, I want us to try to get flush out as much as we can. But we are going to move forward. So I mean, I think this. I, my motion is on the table to approve the first reading. Mr. And, Mr. Mayor, and I apologize, Mr. Bell. It, I believe your your motion needs to be specific as to an alternative. I was going to ask the same question. We and, don't have an alternative motion. Because okay, I will pay, I will select an alternative in the motion. And before he does that, because I don't want to interrupt yep, the motion. Go ahead. Again, um, you mentioned about the instrument to collect affluent fees. Is there an issue with that? The way this is written, I didn't hear any kind of commentary on that. Well, it would be either of their last two alternatives would allow that. Ben, yours is to you preference is the last two, right? Where it separates the impact. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. I well, knowing that I'm going to I mean I hate to do this this way. But, um, okay, hang on. Let me look. I Mr. Bell, yes. and of course, making it specific does not lock you into an exact, but it, it, it puts a, an amount out there and a process out there right. so we can proceed on. Sh should the board choose a different altern alternate or alternative at second reading, does that restart the reading? It, it's, it, it's, it's acceptable at second reading. Okay. There will be a public hearing. Yeah, I, I'm going to go. I'll go with the larger of the two. And we need, I wish we had alternative numbers on this, but it would be the last alternative, which is the wastewater impact of 9225 uh, due upon preliminary plat and effluent disposal of 4500 due at building permit, totaling 13725. That's from the EDU of 350? That is an EDU yeah. of 350. Yes. Yes. I have a motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Is that a nay? 
was the count. Okay I, I said hi as long as my understanding was this can we're going to discuss this at the next meeting because candidly there's some information here that I also am, am looking for but uh, I'm, I'm, what I've heard is it won't happen until March 8th or whatever the meeting is or whatever. I think we're talking about we're past March at 8th. the workshop yeah having the questions together and we can well there's some information about fee schedule and all that for the ratepayers that I would like to understand before we make a, a final recommendation also what system are you going to select so my vote stands as long as this can be fully modified at the next meeting, so that it, should the board choose. Is that the way I understood it? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 I'll pass this four to one. We'll take it to a second. Reading at the next board meeting, correct? And we'll establish a workshop. Right. I've heard several different things about what people would like to hear at that workshop. Yeah, no, no. I think it needs to focus on fees. That's what I've. Yeah. Because I, I don't. I don't know yeah. what. It's it's calculating. It sounds like it's calculated impact fee. Right. But I think Sean was talking about ratepayers. Do we know how much the ratepayers pay currently? So there's cap. Yeah. Right. So. Cap would have to change, and I even put percentages out here because we're numbers. Even at three or four or five percent, it's not a large amount now. But still. That first impasse study was looking at five years, three percent a year for five years. And there were some variables there as well that needed to uh, change <coughs> along the same cost. So that was not a complete and definitive presentation by impasse. I understand. But I think it certainly put it further from where it was in April. I think. Adjusting the rates. <laughs> So what, when is I don't I guess I'm missing the, the timeline. When's the expected time that we would understand that information? Well, the board, uh, the utility board, is still working back through some of these issues and presentations we had. And I think they would have to be further, perhaps, But Brandon's, I guess, motion and suggestion tonight that was dealing with the impact. Understand. The board's already recommended, but. And real quickly, let me get into one specific area as to why that, that rate study is invalid because the financials are invalid. So back when we did the Shell 2 repair, we incurred $1.3 million of expense. Steve, Steve sent me that detail. Then he showed me how that $1.3 million was capitalized to the balance sheet, and we began <coughs> depreciating that. Right? Uh, nothing wrong with that. The issue is none of the old assets were removed from the, from the value of the plant. You understand? So we're, we're depreciating an asset that's, that's at least $1.3 million over, overvalued by the, by the cost of those repairs. You, the asset needs to be written down. It should have been impaired at the time. It should have been at least written down when, when the assets were disposed of. Yeah, so and, then, and then you capitalize the expense. That's our, our financials are, there's no doubt, zero doubt in my mind that the financials are incorrectly stated. I understand what you're it, it, saying. It's, it's like, it's, let me give you an analogy. It's, it's like saying you're driving a $50,000 car, you get in an accident, do $20,000 of damage, you repair it, and now you say you got a seventy thousand dollar car. That that's exactly what we've done. You know, I appreciate what you're saying. I just don't know how to get there. You heard we had a debate with the auditors. Yeah, I, I, I know how to get there. The, you, have, you, have, you, have com, you have competent auditors at so, first start. I, I don't know if you. I don't know. I just think with where we are. 
that's the presentation they made. We had some discussions. I think they made a statement at the end of the day that the or whatever is a policy decision. Wrong. And I understand. It's, I mean, gen it's generally saying, accepted accounting principles. You I, have I to do it. It's not an option. And this policy or engineering or reverse engineering or whatever. I'm not either one. But, and, the, uh, and, that, and I explained that's bogus too because it's, it's, an, it's an accounting determination. Impairment is an accounting determination. The accountants take the facts and determine whether an asset is impaired or not. They, do not, they, do not, they take information from engineers, but they do not rely on an engineer to say, hey, this is impaired and you need to adjust your balance sheet. An engineer is not going to do that. But I, I mean, we're, we continue together, growth is expensive, growth is not paying for itself, we haven't adjusted our rates ever, we need to address these things. We have a good motion from Alderman Bell about that. We're never going to know the, the exact cost. They move by the day. We, let's talk about oil prices today. What happened? How about a rough okay. cost? You know, so a lot of that's going to happen. The accounting conventions, I don't disagree with you, Ben, about impairment. I don't want to pay for impaired expenses and have to cover that debt service in the eyes of the controller. There's arguments to be made, but the reality is we're going to move some chairs around on the deck of the Titanic here, and the, at the end of the day, we're talking about a $20 million system. We can't raise rates enough in certain respects, and the comptroller is happy to look at us and say, you guys have a going concern issue, potentially. We don't need that. It's ridiculous. So we can talk about a million here, a million there, and, and we're going to futz around with our rates. Yeah. Let's get it done. A couple thousand here, there, it starts to add up real money. I think we're all saying the same thing. I think in different shades we are. I'm, when was this last impact fee adjustment? 2007. Wow. So, yeah. To the point. I think we all we're, we're agonizing. Yes. We're agonizing. Okay, don't have to do this. No, if I want to do the right thing, but you're right. It's, it's long overdue. I just wish there was a way to get. Every month we get a bit more clear, clarity, you know. Yeah. We've got some things working for us. Financing is basically free these days if we need to borrow money. You know, good thing is technology has come a long way in 10 years. You know, this MBR solution, I think, wonderful. You know, we've never been confident in the Schaefer system, so maybe that's the right route with the SBR system. Uh, we've got land that we can drip on if we need it. That's a good thing. But we have a buggy system. You know, this all gets to this next topic and what we're trying to do. But, I mean, it's, uh, and, you know, wastewater might be an asset someday and we can sell it for real money. Sell the water. See, that can get on board and give us some guidance there, right? We might have a, a real asset and not a, one that we're fighting about impairment issues about, you know, not that we need to fight about it, but, I mean, then your, your points are well made. I, I don't necessarily disagree with, with that, but, you know, really, what are we trying to do? We gotta, we gotta get the capacity, we're behind the, we're behind the eight ball right now to, to get some of these decisions made. So we're, we don't have the luxury of time in certain respects. Anyways, so we passed on three. Let's go to four. Approve resolution 2020-007, a resolution for the town to enter the professional service agreement with Bard's design solutions for the regional wastewater regional plant upgrades and improvements project. <laughs> Well, I don't know what else to say. Our consultants are here. They can certainly talk about the document before you. Um, as indicated, 110% uh, desire to make sure this is on the record. I mean, this is tantamount when you spend this proposed amount that tonight would authorize that expenditure of $855,000. As an additional 30,000 if we end up going the USDA loan route because of certain requirements they have in the package. Um, currently, um, the principals of Barge are looking at that 50 page document and that still hasn't finished going through that document review. So that's why this, under um, Roman numeral 2, task 4. That's what that 30000 is, if ultimately that's the direction that is pursued. So you're looking at a potential amount of $885,000. Now, that is tantamount again, and this is proved that we go down that road, um, 
This is for that MDR design to get it out to bid. And uh, I believe roughly the eight month timeline on that is what y'all had on the open house slides. That's okay. So, gentlemen, do either of you or any of you gentlemen have anything or man that you'd like to add to what I just said? Questions that, that you've got. I have a quick question. Uh, sure. The task for the thirty thousand for the, um, the additional um, the, it's the USDA. Oh. Those are reports that are required by USDA to be prepared and submitted with the application. Would there be a reason why we would not do that, or why would it? It's just if, if you don't. Have to, Okay. At what point in your design would you need to know? I guess that's that's it doesn't tie to your schedule, your design schedule. We can do this in parallel. Okay. And uh, I should say a lot of what we go in that document needs to be so there's a PDR on there in Jerry Ward and So a lot of what's in the preliminary engineering report, it, a lot of that work's already been done. That, that was part of the master plan and some of the uh, other analysis we've done since then. The, environment, the environmental report would be a, that's, that's not been touched at all. So that would be a, okay. a new document. But yeah, the, it's really just an option only if the town pursues the USDA. I had a question for uh, town council, perhaps. Um, I'm really of the opinion before we before we spend $850,000 designing a system that it sounds like some of us may disagree on costs and other things that, uh, and potentially sign up for another what, $25 million for a system with, with interest. Um, I really want to understand what the costs are to the ratepayers. Um, I know I just mentioned that, but it's hard for me to, it's hard for me to make any kind of decision moving forward based on, you know, I have no idea where we're at with what, what the, the risk is to the ratepayers, um, both on an annual basis and then in the event that we, we go upside down, what the, what the potential risk is. So um, I know we need to adjust rates and move forward, um, but it's really, I guess what I'm getting at for town council, if this is more than a 5% increase for, for ratepayers, is it possible to move this to a referendum? So that we have a sort of. Yeah. More than 5%. Well, I'm just saying, that's just my opinion. If, it, if there's a significant rate increase, if, it, if it's more than a percent or two, then I think it should be up to the public, not three men at a table to decide, is my opinion. Did you get your answer? In that case, I would move to defer this till next month. Is that a referendum just for the? Rate user, the rate payers? How does that work? How do you do that? How do you not let everybody in this? It has to be for everybody in the community. You can't just referendum. That's for people. But there's some people that aren't in the system, so. But it affects everybody. How do you not, not commercial commercial use would use the system? Not necessarily. I mean, you, only the people paying into the wastewater system will be affected, not the whole community. Yeah, there's benefits to everybody, not just the rate payers. So you're, you have to, have to let everybody participate. I don't think so, but. Let us look at it. Yeah, I mean, we could we could debate it, but these guys are going to find the answer. So. In that case, I would move to defer this vote till next month, till we get the answer. I'll entertain that motion. A second. 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 For discussion. I, I'd like to add to some discussion. Um, I will not be voting in favor of the deferral. Uh, I've had plenty of time to uh, meet with the uh, utility board. I appreciate. Um, Mr. Risden taking time to meet with me as well as uh, Barge uh, to fully explain the implications of staying on course with the Shaver system and uh, the impacts of doing so, the irresponsibility that is associated with that. Um, I understand there's a cost associated with this, uh, but the numbers that I've seen vetted and, <coughs> and looked at both by the utility board and 
uh, arch, uh, arch design is a, you know, is a smaller number for an MBR. It's, you know, 14 versus, this is a first cost, 14 versus 24 point something. So uh, no matter what, we gotta solve a problem how to pay for this thing. I'd rather pay for a lower number that gets us more value is the latest technology. I'm not gonna spend taxpayer dollars or ratepayer dollars on an old Gateway 2000 computer. I'm not gonna do that, it's stupid. You know, you, you, need to, you need to do something that makes sense um, for today. Um, so I will not be voting for the Go to Parole. I would have to agree with that because I, we've done a lot of work with the utility board over the past year. We have settled on the MBR system as being the best solution, not only for you know, some of the things that Alderman Bell had mentioned, but also I don't have trust in what we have over there right now, the construction that was used to build that, we, we dug way too deep. Down underneath those lagoons, there's sinkholes over there. We don't know what's, what's underneath all that. We don't really know how long it might last before another catastrophe happens over there. So in my mind, MBR is the way to go. Plus, with the, the benefit of one day, if we could ever get a reuse permit, what we have right now doesn't allow us to even consider it. It'd just completely be off the table. We might be able to have some conversations with TDEC. We might get some assistance from some other folks to have those conversations with them, to be able to persuade them. We're one of the f two towns in the state of Tennessee. It comes down to a fairness policy. It's not fair for us not to have a discharge permit. Quite frankly, if something ever happens to that system or any other system, it becomes a problem of the state. The state doesn't want that problem. So I think it's a it's a better move for us to move on to the NPR. Well, I don't think you thoroughly vetted that because that's a that's an eight to nine million dollar cost difference. So I don't care what's under that liner. If it's less than eight eight and nine million dollars, you come out ahead. Unfortunately, you're changing your tune to what you did two years ago when you and your predecessor held up repairing one of our cells because you wanted that pulled back. You want it repaired. Yes, exactly. And okay, that's, so now that's, you're, that's now, included in my numbers, $2.4 million. You're saying you don't that's care included. what's wrong with the liner. So. No, no, I'm saying we repair what's, what's wrong with it, and if it costs less than $9 million, we come out ahead. That's, it's not a, that's not a <laughs> contrast, and my predecessor, he wasn't my predecessor, he was sitting right next to me. So you're gonna you're gonna go you're running for re-election in November. You're gonna you're gonna walk around telling the telling people in Canterbury that you spent an, order. an extra we eight go through this. million dollars of, of money. Yeah. We have a motion. Let's we have a motion. motion I, a second. I, I can point speak, of order. I can speak we on have this issue. No, we have a motion. Sure. We, let the uh, chair direct. A motion and a second. I'm gonna recognize. Thank you. All of them. Alexander. You you make some good points. Um, I don't disagree. There's we have to move forward. Um, there's been some excellent data provided. My only hang-up is what is it going to cost the people, and nobody in this room can tell me yet. So until somebody can tell me, that's the one reason I'm uncomfortable. So just to clarify. Thank you. All right. I'd like to be recognized. Right. Everybody's got a chance to speak. Right, Sean spoke before. You can, I can speak again. Go ahead. Um, so by my math, as I said, you guys are going to go around telling the people in Canterbury, Tollgate, Bridgemore, et cetera, that you're going to put $8 million of additional cost on them because you, you on a feeling that you don't like the old technology. $8 million to the ratepayers. That, that's the impact. By my math, that's $463 per year per household. That's like a 45% increase in, in, sewer, in annual sewer fees. The key to what you said is your math. Where's your math? You don't have any math. That's my point. You guys don't have any math. Okay. I'm I'm using Barge's number that we saw today. Gentlemen, that you, you saw on the gentlemen. You have to address the chair. You address the chair. All right, chair. The chair. You saw Barge's numbers. I'm using Barge's numbers. What What do you dispute? May I ask Alderman Stover a question? Yes, Alderman What numbers do you dispute? I just saw this today, Ben. I don't know. They were in barges. You could have put it together just like I, I did. Don't, I don't there, understand. There, no what matter what, there's an increase, right? 
I mean, we're talking. There's an, yeah, there's a rate increase no matter what, but you can minimize the rate increase and you cannot make a decision before you fully vetted all the options. This isn't going anywhere. All right. You guys are fools. Thank you. It's right. unbelievable. All right. It's, it's been a topic for many years around here. All those in favor? Aye. No. Fails. I'll make a motion. motion. I'll make a motion to approve. Um, get to my paper here. Resolution 2020-007, resolution of the town of Thompson Station, Tennessee, to approve professional services agreement with Barch Design Solutions Incorporated. I have a motion. Second. Second. Yes. I got one more. Go ahead. Begging you to reconsider this. You are making a huge, huge mistake. I, I can't say it strongly enough. You are picking the most expensive option, you are picking the, the option with the most upfront cost, and you are saddling the ratepayers with, with the, the cost of, of, of your decisions. Thank you. I think I said my piece last time. I, I, until we can know what the exposure is to the ratepayers, I don't think it's, uh, it's my, my, my prerogative to vote for. Alderman Stover, you sit on the utility board, you can't even tell us the impact of the ratepayers. You're going to vote, gonna vote for this without even knowing the impact. Mr. Chair, you have to, you have to direct your right, right, Now we're going to pretend, now we're gonna pretend to enforce plus, these rules. You guys plus, are ridiculous. All right, plus, you have to be identified. Recognized. All right. All right. So, I've recognized everybody that wants to speak. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. We're going to proceed Good with Good luck in November, bro. MBR. Some level of gestation. Whatever that takes. Who is the taxpayers? That's the gestation. Point of order. No we, free lunch. All yeah. right, let's move on. Hey, the mayor can make his comments. I can make mine. Chair annexation submitted by the Bent Land Trust, which is Greystone Quarry. We have the applicant here tonight. Do um, you want to sure. frame this? Thank you, Greg. Uh, please don't do it. Um, what we're endeavoring to do is there is part of the Greystone. Um, for a property project that is extraterritorial in terms of not being in town's urban growth zone. So with it being outside of the urban growth boundary, the only mechanism now that we have available to us to entertain the request for this portion of the property to also be brought into the town is this referendum petition. Um, we've spent a fair amount of time, the applicant has with this attorney, talking to the county, trying to get information from the state to see if there's any other way to proceed. And at this juncture, there does not seem to be available to us a remedy other than this course. And this is very important to the applicant because he's trying to open the facility and part of the ingress egress area that exists is in the county. Um, so, before I guess Rick uh, perhaps adds to it, gentlemen, you've been looking at the referendum issue and all the associated ins and outs. Would you like to expand upon those remarks or otherwise clarify? Sure. Uh, so Normally, annexation, as I'm sure you're aware at this point, is done by owner consent. As the town administrator pointed out, this four acre tract, which is almost encircled by two larger tracts owned by the same trust, which is Greystone Quarry, uh, happens to be outside the town urban road boundary. You cannot do owner consent that way, uh, is essentially what we have discovered. There was an exception we were exploring, but it turns out that that was designed for one piece of property and no other. Um, so 
Annexation by referendum is the only path forward. Uh, the way it works is what you have before you today is a motion to allow us to proceed. There's going to be a number of things we have to address. We've been in communication with the county because Les Watkins Road, which is essentially a north-south running road, uh, which connects basically the rest of town to this four-acre track, uh, is a county road. We'll have to address that, perhaps through a road maintenance agreement. There's a few other considerations that I've been in talks with his attorney about. But what we're asking today is a motion to proceed. What would happen next is a first resolution at the April meeting. Talk to Micah. We would have a plan of services meeting at the Planning Commission meeting in April, and then all of that would be set for public hearing at the May. If this body approves both resolutions, the Williamson County Election Commission would hold an election of the affected individuals, either owners or who live on the property, within 30 to 60 days from that second resolution. That would be the trustee of the trust. Randall Board has been in communication with the Loon County Election Commission. They are aware of this. It's on their radar uh, sometime in the summer. But we're asking you to let us start that process. Uh, as this is a necessary ingress and egress given, I believe, just before our time. This is going to be the second entrance to the quarry based on the traffic study and the traffic projections. A second entrance was needed. It's going across this property, which is in the county. We need to unify it with the rest of it. Okay. Thank you. It's a good summary. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, we're asking for a simple motion. It's not a resolution tonight. It's just we'll come back to you in April. I think you both can add. Just, just this. Um, a year and a half ago, we did the site plan, and we already owned this parcel. And at the time, we were advised a year and a half ago that an easement across this four acre property wouldn't be a problem. Uh, subsequent to construction, we're almost done with the construction for the main entrance into the, to the parking fields. It, it has become an issue. So as Andrew pointed out, the only remedy we see is for this piece of land to be annexed by the town, a zone consistent with the uses that uh, all of the rest of Greystone property is, uh, such that we can have an effective entry into the property. So that, that's, what we're, that's what we're asking to do. This property fronts less walkings. Fronts less walkings, exactly. Well, Mr. Mayor, we're just asking for a simple motion to proceed with the procedure for annexation by record. And I think pushing along those lines. I'll make a motion to um, to approve the proceeding of the annexation of the, of the street. Okay. Have a motion. Second. Motion. Second. Other discussion. No question for this. So we're going to do it right this time. The last last town attorney screwed up their annexation. You guys are doing it right. Correct. Well, of course, our intention is to do it right. I, I've heard uh, about that, uh, but we, we've been in communication with all interested parties, county, election commission. I think we have a plan in place, and that's our goal. All right. Well, I have more faith in you guys than the last guy, so. All right. So we have a motion, second. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So move. We'll move it to... What's the next step? Would it go to? We're going to get a resolution together for April. It doesn't go to Planning Commission until uh, the April Planning Commission. So it'll go in between the two resolutions. I understand right. after, it's 30 to 60 days after the yeah, second. Yeah, I understand. Special. Okay. Understood. okay. All right. Any announcements? Not on entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 So we are adjourned. Thank you.